Hi all, this is Revati, Assistant Professor, Department of CSC, Dr. MGR Educational and Research Institute. Today I am going to brief about the topic Introduction to Servlets, Subject Web Technology and Web Services. The topics to be covered are Introduction, Why to Learn Servlet, Working of Servlet, Web Server and Web Container, Life Cycle of Servlet, and servlet example. Servlets are nothing but the server components. Generally, the static pages are the pages that are pre-built. And uh, using HTML, we can create the static pages. But if you want to create the pages dynamically, dynamic pages are created by using that is uh, during the runtime, it is based on the request. Based on the request, it has to create the web pages dynamically. Means we can go for servlet. So the Java servlets are the program that run on the web server or application server and it acts as a middle layer between the request that is coming from the client and the uh, databases or the applications on the HTTP server. Using servlet, we can collect input from the users through the web page forms, present records or from the database or another sources and create the web pages dynamically. Servlets are generally platform independent because they are written in Java. Why to learn servlet? So before servlets, common gateway interface programming was used to create the web applications. So when we click on some URL, it will go to dynamic page instead of a static page. The URL will decide which CGA program to execute and the web server will run that CGA program in a separate OSL. That OSL environment and the process to execute the code of that particular CGA program. So it all will take a much response time, high response time and it is not scalable at all. So always it is not secured we can say. So we are, instead of CGI, we are going for servlet. So it gives a less response time because each request run in a separate thread and servlets are scalable, object oriented, platform independent and it will execute within the address space of the web server. It is not necessary to create a separate process to handle each client request. So automatically the performance is better compared to CGA. So we are learning servlet. Next the working of servlet. In working of servlet, it reads the explicit data sent by the client Again, that means it reads from the HTML form on the web page. Again, it reads the implicit HTTP request data sent by the client. Again, the, it processes the data and generates the result. And again, it sends back to the explicit data to the clients. So next, we are going to see about what is web server and web container. So these two, two terms we should know before going to the life cycle of servlet. Web server is nothing but it is also known as a HTTP server. It can handle a HTTP request sent by the client and responds the request within the HTTP response. Web container, it is a part of web server or we can say it is otherwise known as servlet container or servlet engine. It is a part of web server that interacts with the servlets. This is the main component of web server that manages the life cycle of servlet. Life cycle of servlet. So in life cycle of servlet, we are going to see five main steps. Loading a servlet, how it is creating instance for each servlet and how it is invoking the init method, service method, destroy method. First loading of a servlet. When a web server starts up, example we have taken Apache Tomcat. So once the web server starts up, the servlet container deploys and loads all the servlets inside this. Creating instance of the servlet. Once the servlet, is, uh, servlet classes are loaded, the servlet container creates instance for each servlet class. The servlet container creates only one instance per servlet class. And all the requests to the servlet are executed on the same servlet instance. So next method is an invoking init method. So init method is nothing but initialization. So calling the initialization method. So this method is called only once in the life cycle. It is also called that is and it is not called for any user request afterwards. So it is used for one time initialization just as within the init method of applets. 
servlet is normally created when the user first invokes a url corresponding to the servlet but you can also specify that the servlet can be loaded when the servlet is first started this method initializes the servlet there are certain unique parameters that you can specify in the deploy descriptor that is your web.xml file for example if a servlet has the value greater than 0 then its init method is immediately invoked during the web container startup so this is the web.xml mapping servlet name then servlet class name after that the mapping should be given in the web.xml file and this method is called only once during the life cycle of servlet next comes the service method that is this is the main method of a servlet life cycle the service method actually the servlet container calls the service method to handle the request coming from the client and to write the formatted response back to the client each time the server receives a request for a servlet the server spans a new thread and calls the service the service method checks the http request type uh, whether it is a get method or post method or put method based on the request it will do the service if the servlet is a http servlet then the service method is receives the request and dispatches to the correct handler method based on the type of request if it is a generic servlet then the request is served by the service method itself so what is the difference between generic servlet and http servlet so generic servlet is nothing but an abstract class it has only the one abstract method that is service method as you know and it has two objects that is servlet request object and servlet response object request object is made by the client and response object is used to return a response back to the client http servlet is a direct subclass of generic servlet and it is a protocol dependent so if you need to get information then we can override do get method if you want to send the information then you can go for do post method based on the request and requirement we can uh, invoke that particular method the do get and do post are the most frequently used method within the each service request as long as the servlet is not destroyed for each client request the service method is invoked it may be number of times but in case of init method and destroyed method they called only once the service method can be called any number of times during the servlet life cycle this is the destroy method this is the final method when servlet container shut down this usually happens when we stop the tomcat server it unloads all the servlets and call the destroy method for each initialized servlet usually this method gives you the servlet a chance to close the database connection and halt the background threads and perform other such cleanup activities this is the method definition public void destroy destroyer and you have to mention the finalization code here comes your web.xml here we will mention the servlet name servlet class and other mappings whatever we have done my servlet name is my servlet i have taken and servlet class name i have taken as an addition example here comes your html program so i have taken two numbers and for first number input type is equal text and for enter the second number input type is equal text finally i have taken the submit button input type is equal to submit button this is my servlet program so i have given class name as add and i have taken http servlet so there are two objects here http servlet request object and http servlet response object so i am taking the two para getting the two parameters number 1 and number 2 i am adding those two numbers and finally i am printing the result k the output will be looking like this so we need to enter the two numbers and finally we need to submit it if we submit it will uh, it will give the addition of two numbers thank you